I've just been looking through one of our um, Facebook groups here and I'm following a thread about a WordPress consultant who's having trouble with a client. They've designed most of the website. They've gone back for the first presentation. The client hates it and they want to start again. It's a really common problem. How do you get the client on the same page really early on and get them to buy into the project? It's very difficult to explain a website in a proposal or a functional specification document because that's a written thing and a website is a visual medium. So the answer is to use prototypes or wireframes and get your client in the browser really quickly. I'm a big fan of using prototypes for landing pages to show the client what it is we're doing before we actually go and design it. And it's just a black and white version of the web page to get them to approve the concept before we actually build it out. So come down to the WP studio and I'll show you how to build a rapid prototype for a landing page using the Elementor plugin. All right, before we dive into WordPress, I wanna explain what a prototype is and why we're building one. A prototype is a, basically a black and white version of a web page or a website. No real design choices have been made and it's just designed to get the client to approve the functionality and approve the concept of what it is we're pitching them, which in this case is a landing page. Uh, so that's what a prototype is. It's just a black and white version to prove functionality and that's why we build it. When, once the client approves the prototype, then we can put it into production and build the finished product. So let's dive into WordPress and see how to build a prototype of a landing page very quickly using the Elementor plugin. All right, here I am. I have a brand new vanilla installation of WordPress out of the box. I'm running this on my local machine using Local by Flywheel, which allows you to set up a local development environment on your laptop so you're not worried about bad internet connections. And this is just a plain old WordPress installation. And the only two plugins that I have installed are the Elementor Page Builder plugin, which you can get for free at the WordPress plugin repository, and the Elementor Pro add-on, which adds a bunch of new features and elements to the, uh, to the page builder. So come on over to my pages menu and click add new, and I'm gonna give this page a title. I'm just gonna call it landing page. And then I'm going to place this page on the Elementor Canvas template, which removes all of the WordPress header, footer, and sidebar stuff, and just gives me a blank page to begin with. I'm then gonna click the publish button, and once the page is published, I'm gonna click the edit with Elementor button to kick open the Elementor page builder. And here it is in all its glory, a very clean looking page builder. Uh, you'll see here uh, I can add a new section to the page by clicking the add new section button or I can just drag and drop any of these elements out of the library onto the page to get started. So now I want to reference the anatomy of a perfect landing page from our friends over at Kissmetrics. And this is a blueprint that I've been using for years. It still works like a champ and it tells you the elements that you should have on a successful landing page. And the very first thing that they suggest here is to have a logo at the top left of the landing page for a bit of brand familiarity. So I'm just gonna grab an image, drag it onto the page here, click my choose, uh, choose your image button and then choose an image from my media library. And here is a placeholder of a logo that I've uh, prepared earlier. I'm gonna insert that onto the page and then from my properties inspector, I'm going to align it left. Cool, cool, all right. The next thing I'm gonna to add to my page is a divider. So I click the little grid icon and then choose divider from my library. And from the properties inspector, I'm gonna make that a dashed divider and I'm gonna turn the color down to about 30% transparent. So it's just a, a black divider at about 30% transparent. And then if I look back at my blueprint here, I can see that that they suggest not to have any additional navigation links, and that really is to avoid distraction and keep your web page user and your web page visitor focused on the one thing that you want them to do on this landing page, which is click the button. So I'm not gonna include any navigation links. I'm gonna include a nice looking headline to grab their attention. So back in Elementor, I choose my heading from my library, and I'm going to type in here uh, first of all, I'm gonna make it black. I'm gonna remove all, all style choices here. I'm just gonna make it black text and I'm gonna turn it up to about 48 pixels so my customer can see that it's a nice, big, bold headline. And then I'm going to type the headline in a way that it reminds me what I'm supposed to put in that headline later on when I actually collaborate with my client. So it's placeholder text, but it actually gives me some cues as to what I should fill in later on. And so that headline that I'm gonna type in here is a big, bold, headline 
with benefits for the customer to grab their attention. Okay, now if I go and have a look back at my blueprint, you'll see here the next section is this two column section with an image on the left or a video, um, a secondary headline, a paragraph of text, uh, some bullet points and a call to action button here, which is actually what I want them to click. So if I click the add new section button in Elementor, it asks me what my structure is. I'm gonna choose a two column structure here and it automatically adds the columns to the page. And then from the edit section uh, icon under the advanced tab, I'm going to add some margin to the top of that section. Now by default, Elementor will link all of your margin values together. So if you add 20 pixels to the top of the section, it will automatically add 20 pixels to the bottom. I'm going to, which I'll show you here, there you go, 40 pixels to the top and bottom. I'm going to unlink those values so that I can specify individual values for each margin. And I'm just gonna add 20 pixels to the top of that section. Okay, now if I click the plus sign in a column here, it opens my library of widgets. I'm gonna add another image. And from my image library, I'm gonna choose a placeholder image that I've prepared earlier. This is so easy, uh, rather than uh, writing HTML and worrying about CSS, to format this page and to align images and to drag and drop my column widths around. You can see that this is a very rapid way of developing a proof of concept. I'll just show you how to, how to change the column widths here by dragging that vertical line back and forth. I'm gonna leave it at 50%. And then in that right column, I'm gonna add my subheading and again, my subheading, I'm gonna give myself some clues as to what I should be writing in that subheading a little later on. Uh, and that subheading will be a subheading to keep their interest and keep them reading. And uh, I'm just gonna change that to a subheading to pique their interest and keep them reading. And then under my library of widgets, I'm gonna add a paragraph here. And again, this paragraph will give me some clues as to what kind of content I should be putting in there. And this, this paragraph is really designed to increase their desire for the action that I want them to take on the page. A short sentence or two to increase their desire for the offer we are making. Also include a list of benefits like this. And I'm just gonna make this text black again uh, not to confuse anyone with design choices. And then from, I can scroll through my library of widgets here or I can use the search function to just search for my icon list, which is what I spoke about before. And the icon list allows me to uh, list a, a, a list of items, to, to insert a list of items, and I can change the icon with each of those items. I'll show you how easy it is to do that. I just click on each item over here and then under the icon, I can uh, write the actual text of the the list item and then under the icon, I can choose which icon I wanna use and Elementor comes with a whole bunch of icons out of the box. So I'm gonna choose a check item for each item and I'm just gonna list the benefits here that I wanna include in this icon list. Again, this is placeholder text that reminds me what to put in later on. So once I've got my third and final benefit in that list, then I'm just going to increase some of the padding and sizing uh, and the color of those icons under the style tab. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just increase the distance between, the spacing between those list item, items. I'm gonna change the icon to black and I'm going to increase the text indent a little bit. Just give myself a little bit more white space around there. Awesome, cool, cool, this is very cool. Uh, and the final thing I'm gonna add in this section here is the actual call to action button. Uh, again, I'm going to use placeholder text here, which reminds me what to put on the button later on. And the button should be a very strong call to action. So if you want them to join the fundraising campaign, download the free report, or buy the ebook, the button needs to say, join the fundraising campaign, download the white paper, buy the ebook. It shouldn't say click here. Uh, so I'm just gonna type in here, call to action in all caps to remind me what to put on that button a little bit later on. And then I'm gonna make it a medium sized button and just change the styling a little bit, give it a black background again, so as not to confuse my client with any design choices. Okay, let's go back and have a look at my blueprint. Uh, the only other thing I need here now is another divider and then a couple of testimonials underneath for some social proof. 
So back in Elementor, I'm going to add a new single column section, and then I'm going to duplicate this divider that I added earlier and drag the duplicate down into that single column. How easy is that? Very, very easy indeed. And then I'm going to add a two column section underneath here. And again, I'm going to use the search function to search for my testimonial widget, drag my testimonial widget onto the page and literally fill in the blanks. I'm going to fill in the, the type of alignment of my image. I'm going to align uh, everything uh, left or center. I can choose how I want my image to be displayed with the customer's name. Uh, and I can then click on the content area and then add some placeholder text, which again reminds me of what to put in there later on. And in this case, it's some positive words here from about the offer, some positive words here about the offer from a happy customer or user to add some social proof. Uh, I'm going to include the placeholder avatar image that I've prepared earlier to show the customer that this is going to be actually a, a headshot of one of their customers or users. And I'm just going to change the color of that title from blue to black. So underneath name here, I'm going to change that to black. Awesome. And now I can simply duplicate that testimonial and drag the duplicate into the column on the right, and we have another testimonial, and I'll just change John Doe to Jane Doe. Awesome. Okay, now according to my blueprint, I'm just about done. The only thing I want to add underneath is a footer with a copyright and the company name. So I'm going to add a single column, and I want to make the background of this section a little bit darker, just to show the client what it might look like with some light text on a dark background. I'll make that 30% transparent black, and we'll add a heading into that section. Uh, we'll make that text white, and we will center it. We'll make it a paragraph instead of a heading. We'll center it, and we'll just add uh, copyright 2018 Acme widgets, and I'll just unbold that text so that it's normal paragraph font. And I'm just going to add a little bit of padding in this section here to give me a bit more white space. Under the Advanced tab, I'm going to unlink my padding values, add 20 pixels to the top, and 60 pixels to the bottom. Cool. All right. Now what I'm going to do is update that page and then preview it in another browser so I can see what it looks like on the front end. Here it is. I can see straight away there's a couple of things I want to change. I want to add some more white space above that footer, and I want to add some white space above the logo. So very quickly back in Elementor, I can click on the Edit Section icon and add some padding at the bottom of that Testimonial section. So I'm going to add some pixels there. And above the logo, I'm going to add some padding above that logo. So let's add another 20 pixels above there. And as soon as I click the update button, the preview page refreshes in real time. And there it is. That is my prototype of my landing page built in less than 10 minutes using Elementor. You can see how quickly and how rapidly you can produce a proof of concept that you can then send over to a client, get them to approve it. This is much easier than trying to explain in words what a landing page is and how a landing page functions. Uh, again, not confusing the client with any design choices because if you use real images, they'll come back and complain about the image. If you use colors or fonts, they'll come back and say, that doesn't match our style guide. So keep it as plain as possible. And in less than 10 minutes, you can produce a landing page prototype, get the client to approve this, and then you can actually go and build out the, the proper landing page with their branding style guides. You can integrate it with their CRM, MailChimp, their internet, their email service provider, whatever integrations you need to make happen. But this is a very quick way to get in the browser and start having a meaningful conversation with your client rather than trying to explain in words what it is we're doing. Hey, I hope you found this video helpful. Please leave me a comment under the video and tell me what you want to learn next about running your WordPress consulting business. Make sure you subscribe to our, our YouTube channel and click the bell to get notified. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.